In today's day and age, if you want to make a successful indie title, your game needs to stand out from the hundreds, if not thousands of games being released every single day. I've spent a lot of time fundamentally breaking down the specifics of how indie games continue to succeed in such a competitive market. This ultimately boils down into one of the following categories. Your game innovates on an existing successful title in a marginally new way. Your game plays into the emotion of nostalgia, reviving games of your consumer's past experiences. Your game reinvents or combines existing genres to create uniqueness from familiarity. Or just slap open world on your game's description and you should be fine. That's what we did. All right, so in reality, this phenomenon of open world experiences inherently being better than linear ones is clearly not true. Maybe once upon a time we could get away with this mentality, but we have certainly passed the expiration date of the open world genre being limited in our modern games. So just like in any genre, in order to make a successful game in said theme, ultimately the most important aspect is held in the execution. You can have an amazing idea for a game, but if your execution falls flat, you will not be able to keep your players engaged in what you're trying to create, usually resulting in a poor quality game. In today's devlog, I will structure a few questions I have asked myself over the course of my game's development for creating a fun open world experience in my story-driven RPG game. If you are watching this and also developing an open world experience, make sure you ask yourself similar questions that apply to your own game while watching. For those of you that are new around here, I am currently developing an open world monster catcher RPG game called Monster Tribe. From resource collection to leveling up monsters, there are many different aspects of this game we are incorporating to keep a unique experience in itself. With the game's introduction out of the way, one of the biggest questions I had asked myself during early development of this game was... Does your game actually need an open world structure? This might seem like a silly question to ask yourself, right? If I decided to make my game non-linear, then clearly my game needs to have an open world to survive. Well, I think the main question is why? Why are you making your game non-linear in the first place, and how does your game benefit from adding such a crucial component? As a developer, this is something you should be asking yourself hundreds of times throughout the development of your game, as every attribute or new mechanic should, to the core, only add value to your game and not just be another thing you added to fill out a mediocre idea. However, for my game, the reason we decided to create an open world experience is that other than it not being seen enough in the genre of monster catchers, we wanted to create a story that develops around the actions of the player and create an experience prioritizing exploration and discovery. Our game takes place on a diverse island filled with monsters of varied attributes and assorted ecosystems. I have always been intrigued by games that set you up with the tools to succeed without holding your hand through a guided vision the developer lined up for your experience. Instead, we give you the ability to develop your own ideas of what the world means and what lessons can be taken away from each experience throughout your own unique journey while playing. What is it that makes this world compelling? While I briefly discussed the importance of themes and variety in different zones, we wanted to make sure that each environment of our game has a unique perspective and allow players to discover the world we have created in their own way. For example, we touch on topics of self-acceptance, egotism, confidence, manipulation, leadership, and so much more. But the key is, we do it through organic means. From NPC dialogue introducing different personalities of characters, legendary creatures inhabiting certain behavioral traits, and even environmental mechanics focused on deepening the message of said location, we have fully planned out each and every section in our game to mean something entirely different from all the other areas. This is important as the story will develop and feel impactful no matter which area you take on in whichever order presented. However, each area, each story, stands on its own to ensure a satisfying journey from start to finish. How can my level design keep players feeling accomplished? With Monster Tribe being an open world experience, we want to encourage players to explore, discover, and innovate. With that being said, we have flooded the world with secret treasures to uncover for those that are looking to search a little harder or take on extra areas unneeded to progress the story. 
Rewarding players even in small ways like adding in treasure chests in hard to find areas or finding side quests to help fill out the world makes all the difference for creating the kind of exploration experience we want to give our players. Another way we'll be keeping players feeling accomplished on their non-linear journey is actually through adding restrictions. Another contradicting statement, right? If I'm making an open world game, shouldn't the fun come from exploring anywhere at any time in any way? Well, yes and no. We want to give players the opportunity to journey into any area they would like in any order, similar to those classic Mega Man games. However, to have the world feel like a more believable place, we decided to group areas into heavy and light wilderness areas. Light wilderness will usually mean a player can traverse at any point in time, having levels scale with your story progression. However, to prevent the game to be entirely beaten with no real feeling of accomplishment, certain objective quests will be needed to be completed before entering the more challenging wilderness areas and the famous towers that are required to progress further in our game. We currently have a decently buggy, playable demo out there that players can download and try for themselves. Just keep in mind that a lot of the key focal elements of what makes our game a success are not exactly in the demo. We've still managed to get tons of amazing feedback from our players, and if you see potential in the idea of what this game will be upon release, make sure to wishlist Monster Tribe on Steam, and maybe share the game around with your friends. I hope this video helps you in some kind of capacity, or encourage you to start developing games of your own, but thank you so much for watching to the end, and I wish you the best of luck in accomplishing the successes you have envisioned for your journey.